This video will show you how to install Windows 10 on any PC or laptop. It will walk you through everything you need to know, starting from downloading of Windows 10 to Windows 10 initial setup procedure, and everything in between in an easy to understand step by step manner. Also, this video is designed to work even after the discontinuation of Windows 10. So, let's get started. Welcome to Phase 1 Windows 10 Download. The first thing you need to do is to download the Windows 10 ISO file. As of now, it is available for download from Microsoft and you can do that by using the media creation tool for Windows 10. But as you heard, Windows 10 is officially at the end of its life cycle and is going to be discontinued on October 14, 2025. If you are watching this guide post discontinuation, you will not be able to download the Windows 10 ISO file from the official source anymore. Don't worry, you can go to the Google Drive link provided in the video description and download an original copy of the latest and final build of Windows 10 ever released. It has Windows 10 ISO for 64 and 32 bit. Our ISO contains both architecture. Don't worry, the files are unmodified and have no viruses or malware. As I said, it is an original copy of Windows 10 acquired straight from Microsoft for the purpose of archiving. If you are unsure of your system architecture, you can always check that by going to Settings, System, About and look for System Type under Device Specifications. Or refer your motherboard manual and then download the appropriate ISO from any source you prefer. So let me show you how to download Windows 10 ISO directly from Microsoft while it's still possible. Click the Download button under the section Create Windows 10 Installation Media. It will download the Media Creation Tool. So go to the download location and run the tool. Now agree to license terms, choose the option create installation media for another PC and click next. Uncheck this box called use the recommended option for this PC. Now you'll be able to manually choose the language, edition and architecture of your Windows 10 ISO. So choose accordingly. Then click next. Now choose the option ISO file and click next. Now choose the download location for the ISO file and that will start the download. Once it is completed, you can access the file by going to the download location. Welcome to Phase 2 Windows 10 Media Creation. Once you download the ISO, it's time to create a bootable flash drive with it so that we can install Windows 10 on your desired device. And for that, you're gonna need a tool called Rufus. So go to this website, link will be in the video description. Now look under the download section and click a link to download the latest and compatible version of the tool. Since my system which I am going to run the tool is a 64-bit one, I am going to download the Rufus for Windows X64. Once you get the tool, go to the download location and run the tool. Now plug in any USB flash drive that has a capacity of a minimum of 8GB. Rufus will auto-detect your flash drive even though just make sure it's the correct one. Now choose the disk or image option from the boot selection and it's time to add the ISO file to the Rufus. So click on the select option and browse and choose the Windows 10 ISO that we downloaded earlier. Now you need to choose an image option. You can just leave it as the default option which is standard Windows installation. Now you're gonna need to select a partition scheme. You can choose GPT or MBR from here. To know which partition scheme is suitable for your system, go to the disk management. You can do that by going to your start menu, now right click on it and choose the option disk management. On disk management just select your C drive, now right click on the disk option and choose properties. From here go to the volumes tab and look for partition style and you will find out whether your system uses GPT or MBR. But what if it's a new PC that has no OS installed in it? Don't worry just choose the GPT option without thinking twice. Because GPT is a modern partitioning scheme, part of the UEFI interface, so in short, every modern computer uses the GPT partition scheme. On the other hand, if your computer is an old one, it most likely uses the older BIOS or UEFI CSM. In that case, you can choose to go with the legacy method, that is MBR as your partition scheme. Now you can hit the start button and you will see the Windows user experience pop-up window. Enable the option create a local account with username. Now type in your preferred username for your Windows 10 local account and Rufus will modify the ISO accordingly. You can do it if you just want to create a local account for your Windows 10 instead of using a Microsoft account or you should if you are doing this installation post discontinuation of Windows 10. Now click OK and you might see this warning message. 
which says ISO you have selected contains a UEFI bootloader that has been revoked and that will produce a security violation screen when secure boot is enabled on a fully up-to-date UEFI system. If you obtain this ISO image from a non-reputable source, you should consider the possibility that it might contain UEFI malware and avoid booting from it. If you obtained it from a trusted source, you should try to locate a more up-to-date version that will not produce this warning. The fact is that you will not find a more up-to-date version of Windows 10 at this point. Because as you know, the OS is at the end of its life cycle or am I already discontinued if you are watching this video in the future. Also, this is not an error that Rufus itself encountered, but just a simple warning. Rufus is trying to warn you about the secure boot vulnerability that Windows 10 still has and has not been successfully patched to date. And since this is a mere warning, there was no actual error. You can very much press OK to continue on this warning. No matter where you get the ISO from, you might also encounter this warning message. Yet be careful and make sure to download the Windows 10 ISO from a source you trust. So click OK to get past the warning and you will see another pop-up, which will ask your permission to format the USB flash drive. You should click OK to continue the process. And that will start the Windows 10 USB bootable media creation. It will take a while, so sit back and relax. Once it is finished, you can close the Rufus and safely remove the flash drive from your computer. Welcome to Phase 3, launch Windows 10 setup using UEFI or BIOS. Plug in the newly created bootable flash drive to the PC that you want to install Windows on. Turn on the device and keep pressing the BIOS key. For this particular laptop, it's function button 2 or F2. But in your case, it might be the delete key or F12. It will differ from brand to brand or model to model. So to know for sure, do a quick Google search or refer your motherboard manual. Anyway, as I said, keep hitting the BIOS key as soon as you started your computer or at least before the boot logo disappears. If you miss it, don't worry, just restart the computer and try again. Anyway, once you succeeded, it will boot you into your UEFI firmware settings. It is where you can then boot into the bootable USB flash drive so that we can start the Windows 10 installation. From here, look for boot menu, boot mode or something similar. Like the BIOS key, we have different UEFI or BIOS menu from brand to brand or model to model. I will try to explain this as best as I can. In this particular UEFI interface, it is just a case of going to the boot menu and choosing the USB bootable flash drive that we created, which will start up the Windows 10 installation. If this isn't what your UEFI looks like, there is another common method as well, which is setting your first boot device as the USB bootable flash drive and save and exit. To demonstrate the example, I'm using a different PC which has a different UEFI interface. As we did before, look for boot menu, boot mode or like here, just boot. Go into the menu and change the first boot option of boot device to the USB bootable flash drive. Now hit F10 on your keyboard and click OK. That will save the settings and will boot you into the Windows 10 installation just like the other method. One additional tip, in some older BIOS, just after you press the F10 key and save the settings, it might even display a message that says press any key to continue. If you see that at that point, hit any random key on your keyboard, which is required to boot up the Windows installation setup in that case. Hope explaining the two most common methods helpful. Welcome to Phase 4, Windows 10 installation. From here, the first thing you need to do is to choose your preferred language for Windows 10. Now choose your time and currency format and finally choose your preferred keyboard or input method, then click next. Now click the install now button and wait for a second. It will show you the Microsoft license terms, so check the box I accept the license terms and click next. Now choose the option custom install windows only. It will get us to the crucial part of Windows 10, the disk partition. As you can see, this particular computer has a previous Windows partition. So I'm going to delete them before making the new partitions we need. To delete any partition, just select the particular partition and click the delete button. It will show you a warning dialog box, so click OK to continue with the deletion process. And you can see the deleted partition will be shown as unallocated space which is simply means that part of storage is not assigned to any partition. Now continue deleting all the primary partitions as well as the MSR reserved and system partition. 
Once you complete deleting your partition, you will see your entire drive capacity as one big unallocated space. In this case, it is 953.9 GB, which is my 1 TB SSD drive. If you want, you can only create a single partition using the entire drive capacity. Or you can create multiple partitions out of the available storage as well. It is completely up to you. Technically, you can create any number of partitions you want. But I don't recommend creating more than two partitions if the drive capacity is under 1 TB. I understand we have different needs, so I'm gonna leave that decision to you. To create a new partition, just select the unallocated space and click on the new button. It will show you the available unallocated space here in MB. In my case, it is showing 9,76,762 MB, which is roughly 1000 GBs. And out of that 900 plus GBs, I would like my first primary partition to be around 460 GB. So let's send the approximately equivalent amount to that in MB and click the apply button. That will ask your permission to create additional partition for your system files, which is permission to create MSR and system partition alongside the primary partitions. So click OK. And we have created the first primary partition that I'm going to install the Windows 10 on. If you are confused about converting GB to MB, just Google GB to MB converter and use it to convert your desired drive size. Now I'm going to create a second partition with the leftover unallocated space. To do that, as we did before, select the unallocated space and click on the new button. It will show you the available unallocated space and since I'm not planning to create another partition, I'm going to leave the size as is. Now click the apply button and we have finished creating all the partitions we need. You might ask why I created a second partition. Like I already said, we all have different needs. In this case, I created it because I want my windows on a separate partition from my important files. So I could reinstall or reset my PC without affecting my important files in the event of system corruption or malfunction. Trust me, it's a lot easier that way. Anyway, as I said, you can configure your partitions however you need. Hope you have finished the partition. In that case, let's continue the Windows 10 installation. Just choose a newly created partition or partition you want to install the Windows on. Remember, whichever partition you select for the installation will be your C drive or system drive. Now click the next button and you have begun the Windows 10 installation. Make sure you have plugged in if it's a laptop and make sure you have a power backup if it's a desktop. It will restart your computer many times during the installation, so please try not to interfere the process. It may take a while, so let's wait until it finishes. And here we go, we are almost there. Welcome to Phase 5 Windows 10 Initial Setup. Choose your country or region from here and click Yes. Now select a keyboard layout or input method, then click yes. Now we'll ask you if you want to add a second keyboard layout. If yes, click add layout and choose a second keyboard layout or just click the skip button. Now we'll ask you to connect to the internet. Since we are going for a local account with this installation, we don't need to connect to a network for now. So click the I don't have internet option. Now we'll encourage us to connect to a network to complete the initial setup once again. Saying if you do, you can set up things like Microsoft OneDrive, Office 365 and so on and so forth. Don't worry, if you want, you can set up that later. For now, let's click continue with limited setup option. And it will ask you to configure your device privacy settings, so choose as you prefer. Once you made your choice, you can click accept. Now wait for some time while it's preparing the desktop. And finally, we'll ask you to configure the privacy settings once again. If that happens to you, just choose as you previously did and hit the accept button. And there you go, you have successfully installed the Windows 10. But wait, it isn't over yet, we have one more thing to do. Just restart your system and it will ask you to set up a new password for your local account. It will ask you to enter the old password, don't worry, Rufus will not set up a default password. So you can leave that field empty. Now enter your desired password into the second field and repeat the same in the last one. Hit enter and you have successfully created a password for your Windows 10 local account. And we have finally reached the end of the guide. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it helpful, please like, subscribe and share. 
This is your host Amal Rafiq. See you soon with another one.